Hello and welcome back. Today we will be continuing our Victoria 3 tutorial series and today we're going to be doing a tier list for the early game military technologies and this one might be a little bit controversial. Uh, we'll see what people think. Um, in this video we're going to be doing three things particularly. We're going to be talking about kind of some of the background discussions required to even really talk about all these texts that I think are important. Then we're going to do the tier list and then I'm going to try and do a five to ten minute summary of the tier list. All in all the video should be about an hour. Um, we have other tier lists already for production and society tech and let's jump into kind of the background discussion. So the thing that we need to kind of just first talk about is how uh, technology works in general. I'll try and be brief here but if you have a if you are currently in a tier of research so let's say we have some level one research complete but not all of it if you try and research a level two tech so steel working to Bessemer process for example you will incur malice that is based on the number of unfinished texts in the uh that are remaining in the tier you're currently in and so what this means as a general strategy what you want to do is you want to research the very best text in a given tier and let the other ones natural spread to you and the strategy largely informs how we are ranking things in the tier list. For the tier list, what we are focused on most is how likely you are to research the technology um, when it is available for you to research. This is not how powerful it is in the vacuum, although they too will often correlate, but sometimes even if a tech is really good in the vacuum, you never end up researching it as quickly as possible because it's just not effective to research as quickly as possible. And so knowing this in mind, we'll just kind of um, go into talking about a little bit balance. As far as the early game texts go, it seems to be the case that production tech is the best tree followed by society tech, and then military tech. Military tech is the worst tier, in my opinion, um, in the early game, particularly. Um, the tier one and two techs are all going to be ranked low, particularly because there's better options in production and society tech. Tier three is a little bit of a turning corner for military tech, but it's still not especially good. Later on in the game, the military tech becomes particularly good in sp uh, particular to focus on is trench works, NCO training, and mobile army are all, armor are all particularly strong in the late game. Okay, a uh, second thing as far as background consideration that I think is important for evaluating military tech is that you get to choose when you go to war and the military tech doesn't do anything for you when you're not at war, right? And so you also get to choose who you go to war against. And so Early on, what you might want to do, or what I think you should do, is just avoid picking fights you can't win. This makes the production and society techs a lot better, because, especially in the early game, because the pr production and society techs will always be doing something effective. When I research atmospheric engine pump, for example, I get a new PM that gives me more coal. It's going to make my stuff more profitable. It's always on, in a sense. When I research, for example, Napoleonic Warfare and I unlock mobile artillery, this is only on when I'm fighting a war and it's only particularly on when I'm fighting a war in which it would make a difference. Since I don't think you should declare wars that are particularly close and you should mainly just pick on weaker weaker countries for the most part, uh, this makes it so that military tech in general suffers because you can kind of just wait and let it natural spread to you and pick soft spots instead of going for really hard wars and there are a few exceptions. The first and largest exception is if you are starting out as a subject, you will often need to fight your overlord. And so for anyone who's starting out as subject or in the context of a subject, you can feel free to bump everything up one to two tiers, right? Because breaking free from being a subject is a particularly advantageous war. You know, a lot of times what you will want to do in terms of war is you'll like want to like push in through Zululand and take Transvaal and this type of stuff. And these are soft targets. It's not like being a subject of Great Britain and having to fight Great Britain. And so if you are a subject, researching these texts in order to hit a timing window is particularly good. And I think that this is just kind of how you should evaluate military tech in a vacuum is you should look at it like I'm trying to hit a timing window when I'm going to have way better PMs, this type of stuff. If I want to research military tech and if I don't need really much better PMs in order to beat my opponent, i.e. I'm not fighting a great power, I shouldn't worry about the mil tech. 
The second context where it's kind of good is if you are playing as a great power, which I get the sense that a lot of players play as great powers. I do not play that much as great powers. If you're having a great power versus great power fight, you know, having good tech will be important. But if you're not doing this, it's much less important. And so, you know, if you're playing UK and you want to fight France, then mill tech is going to be better. But my opinion is if you're playing UK, uh, you should just not want to fight France and you should instead conquer Argentina or something. And so, you know, the great power is the second context where mill tech will also look a little bit better. And the third context is if you are not save scumming. Currently in the game, um, uh, diplomatic plays are particularly, in my estimation, broken because they are kind of opaque and it is a bad user experience. And while this is a separate discussion that would take a lot longer to have, I think that a lot of people, or what the metagame seems to be, is you start a play and then you wait to see if a massive, like, five great powers join against you. And if you get something like that, you just reload and you just don't do that play. And so if you're particularly deciding, I don't want to do that, I want to play Iron Man, uh, I don't know why you would play Iron Man in the game's current state. Uh, largely because when you have a subject that has a rebellion and then you click switch sides, you brick your run. Um, which you can accidentally click switch sides because you often want to click declare neutrality, right? It's the buttons in the same spot and there's no confirmation, it just swaps you. Um, but come more back to the point if you wanted to do something where you had no safes coming also military tech would become a lot better and so why do i think that my tier list is going to be controversial i am going to have zero s tier military tech and you might be able to agree if you disagree that there should be no s tier tech that's fine but if you think uh, even if you disagree on where whether or not there should be s tier military tech for the early game something you might be able to agree on is the positioning relative to all the other techs in regards to that um and so in general, you get techs before a big conflict, and otherwise you don't really research military tech, and so that made ranking all of these a little bit difficult, but let's get into the tier list and let's get started. So we will have to jump back to the browser, and back to the browser, and we're going to talk about army reserves. So army reserves gives you either 20 or 25% more conscriptable battalions. Um, this is not especially good. Um, you can kind of just ignore it. In particular, it's good on uh, techs that have or co countries that have high population that are not super, super high. Because uh, very often with a country like China, you will max out your conscriptable battalions. And so you will hit your cap. And so the extra conscriptable battalions is not useful. Um, it's perhaps a little bit useful on the USA because they start with the high conscription uh law as far as their military goes especially if you want to stay on that law and so in this context it may be good um but in general what you can do if you really want a lot more conscriptables and you also don't want to pay for a lot of uh stuff while going in on it is you can come in and you can declare an edict for enlistment efforts which will give a five percent conscription rate now if we take a look at our law in here i believe we have professional army the current conscription rate is one percent so this x six is the conscription rate and will allow you to get an enormous amount more conscripts and also national militia will also give you a five percent conscription rate and a hundred percent a hundred plus a hundred conscription center max level so if you really wanted to lean into conscripts um i would recommend just going national militia and using conscription efforts in the areas that you have i don't think there's any country where you have like an enormous amount of states where you also like want to have a huge amount of conscripts like you can't support um you can't support a large enough military it's generally low state countries that want to do this and so maybe you want to go a low state country go either national militia mass conscription and do the enlistment efforts which is going to give an enormous amount more conscripts and i think if you're doing it like this um you could maybe have like one state uh where you're you know using actually good pms with your conscripts and then encourage enlistment efforts and then swap over to this sort of thing but for the most part i don't think it's particularly useful to get these extra conscript techs um and so we're gonna put it in d tier now the next two techs that are coming up we're gonna just talk about now we are going to talk about the two early artillery and line infantry. And in particular, in terms of improving your army, these improve your army some of the very most out of any of the techs. 
But unfortunately, these are tier 1 techs and almost anyone who has these available to research to them will be really far behind on the production tech and will want to go, you know, into lathe, atmospheric engine pump, and will also want to grab a bunch of stuff, you know, uh, either like international trade or centralization, stock exchange, colonization, egalitarianism, like these types of things. And so as a result, you just generally don't want to research these kind of ever. Um, yourself, you just want to let them natural spread to you. This is my estimation because you can just avoid wars you can't win. And so line infantry in particular uh, doubles the offense and I think triples the defense uh, based off of based uh, PMs. Let's just take a look to confirm this. And then we'll also talk about artillery. So we're going to swap everything back here. And we'll remember it's in shang -Zi. So irregulars give 10 offense and 15 defense and 15 morale loss. And line infantry gives 20, 30, and a little bit less morale loss and some extra training rate. Um, it basically doubles the power of your military. This is the largest increase you can possibly get uh, with a little bit of a caveat in that cannon artillery is also going to give you 10 offense. So it's the same plus 10, 10 defense. So it's a little bit less and it's also going to give you morale damage which is a lot stronger in 1.2 with the changes and also kill rate and so these techs are kind of equivalent um in some sense but i do think that uh the one for line infantry is a little bit better because if you are going to be building uh arms industries in particular uh the arms industries with the very base pms will just build uh, small arms. And so you can support this, the small arms ones, a little bit better. And also it is more important to be swapped onto kind of your um, primary PMs because the penalty for swapping is a lot higher uh, for the primary PM than the secondary PM. So if you could do something proactively, you would rather proactively have line infantry because reactively researching cannon artillery and swapping to it incurs less of a PM. It's an 80% offense and defense PM for switching the primary one over the course of a year, and it's a 20% offense and defensive penalty for research uh, for swapping over a secondary PM. And so let's jump back into the browser and put the things into the rankings over here. Keeping in mind, we are doing D for armory reserves. For line infantry and artillery, again, it is because there are so many other techs you want to research. And I think you can just dodge the wars that you are, feel like you're going to lose. We are going to put it in B, even though it improves uh, the state of your military by a larger margin than any other tech in the, in the entire tier list. You know, if a tier 3 tech did the same thing, um, then it would be easily S tier. But we're talking about a tier 1 tech that's just really not going to cut it relative to, you know, actually improving your economy. If you have a way bigger stick, um, this is kind of my philosophy, is you just try and get a bigger stick and then you just beat on people smaller than you. Um, this is going to be different from multiplayer as well, um, which is perhaps something I should have said in the caveats. You know, the way you are approaching stuff is going to be different in multiplayer, but this for single player, we're going to put them like this. Okay, next up we have Napoleonic Warfare, which is another secondary uh, military PM for uh, cannons. I believe it gives, well, let's just jump in and see exactly what it gives. But if I'm not mistaken, it gives a little bit, kind of like the same juice as uh, the last tier. So we go from plus 10, uh, plus 10 to plus 15, plus 15. So it's an extra five. You also get more morale damage, 50% more morale damage. And this is, you know, it's... It's not terrible, but we're actually going to put it, it... It's okay, but, like, again, this is a Tier 2 tech, or... No, it's a Tier 1 tech. Uh, it's one of the later Tier 1 techs. And it's just really not going to make the cut. Um, insofar as, you know, here we have it right here. This is going to be the one of the last Tier 1 techs. A lot of countries start not having Napoleonic Warfare, but you can just wait and let this gnat spread to you. You're, again, we're valuing this tech's not how powerful they are in the vacuum, because line infantry is really, really, really good in a vacuum, but within the greater context of the game, where you're going to be wanting to go, you know, production and society techs first. And so because of this, we have to put it particularly low. Um, and so we're going to put it in D tier behind... Or sorry, not D tier. We're going to put it in C tier. It's not quite that bad. We're going to put it in C tier behind the other tech. Um, behind artillery. Now, hydraulic cranes is one of the ones that just increases the amount of docks you can have. 
Uh, in general, uh, you are going to be really wishing you had more ports when you don't have a lot of coastal provinces. I think the thing you should do is just conquer more coastal provinces rather than try and handle it with the tech. Also notably, um, this increases the amount of ports you can add by more the more coastal provinces you have, and the more coastal provinces you have, the less likely it is to be an issue. So we're going to put this pretty firmly in D tier. Um, the next up we have Screw Frigate, which gives you unlocks a new PM for ships and shipbuilding. Now very often this PM is not profitable, and so the reason why you might like it though is not based on the profitability, but instead based on the way it swaps things over. And what I mean by that is it changes uh, Screw Frigate, if we over over here, it switches reinforced uh, wooden ships, it is going to start using quite a little bit more engines and wood, it is no longer putting in the engines. Let's find a one that it has a shipyard here. So we're going to swap back to everything. And so notably, it starts out on Merchant Guilds here which is owned by shopkeepers, which contribute 5% of the dividends of the building uh, to, or they don't, they have investment pools contribution and they contribute 5% of what the building is making. In this case, it's not a lot because we swapped the, back the PMs. And the privately owned will contribute 20% um, to the investment pool contribution, which is substantially more. And you can swap over to this by going to, you know, the uh, reinforced wooden ships will do this. Notably, it also decreases the proportion of the inputs that are fabric, but is often unprofitable. And so you'll have to kind of make a bit of an evaluation. It will sometimes be profitable if you have a lot of clippers relative to, you know, the man of war demand, if we like go out of here. And so like this type of thing, but for the most part, it's not gonna be particularly effective or it's not gonna be that, that profitable, but switching on to having capitalists is going to be good. And so it's a decent one, but if you are looking to get more capitalist investment pool, you're almost never going to want to come in here for it. You know, you're going to want to research a production tech. And so for this reason, it's not particularly good. And perhaps we're ranking it even a little bit too high here, but we are going to put it in uh, B tier or sorry, C tier, I think. Yes, C tier. And we are going to put it behind line infantry or sorry, screw frigate. No, we're putting this in D tier. I have my cheat sheet off to the right. We are going to put it ahead of Hydraulic Pump. But the thing is, is it's just often not profitable. Um, and it does swap on to be capitalist owned, but it's it's not there for me. All right, next up, we have Power of the Purse. This will increase your ability to... Uh, the It'll increase offense and defense of ships by a little bit. And it will also, more notably, increase uh, your... Uh, conscription rate for or it's not conscription it's like uh recruitment rate or something like this i don't think it's called conscription rate but it'll increase the rate at which you can uh build your ships up often you need to build up your ships proactively before you're going to need them because they take forever to come through but we're going to put this in d tier and we're going to put it ahead of army reserves i think but this is just you're not researching this very often it is kind of nice but you just need to build your ships ahead of time next we have general staff and if we take a look, I think it's important to take a look at general staff in the context of where it is on the tech tree, as well as how good it is. So, for general staff, we're going to quickly take a look at how good it is. It is a, going to be a primary PM, and it goes from brings you from line infantry to skirmish infantry, which notably gives you plus 10 offense, uh, plus uh, 5 defense, notably... I think it's important to talk about this. This is going to be the closest offense and defense are in terms of PMs until you get to mechanized infantry. Although squad infantry is fairly close. Um, this means that for wars where you need to push fronts instead of do landings, um, this is going to be the period of time when everyone's on skirmish where this is going to be most of the case. Kind of once you get into trench, you start just defending fronts and then trying to land them as best you can and open up new fronts and then only push when you have a really big advantage uh, because trenches, if you notice, it's got plus 40 offense and plus 60 defense. Um, and so you're also not capturing as many provinces and not losing as many provinces. Uh, but let's just take a look. Skirmish infantry, let's swap that up. And notably, let's take a look at the context in here. Skirmish infantry, general staff, is going to be at the very beginning of the second tier. The next primary PM 
is Trench Works, which is a tier 4 tech. And so this means it's going to be a very long time here on General Staff. And General Staff is particularly what you want to be going for. It's also notably a tier 2 tech. So very often you will research your production, your society tech, your mill tech will spread to you, and then you can research General Staff. And at the time you get the ability to research General Staff, often you do have some more production and society tech. And so it becomes a little bit better on this front. And it is also going to be the best PM for quite a while. So swapping onto it does feel pretty good, especially if you're a great power or you need to break free uh, from, you know, having uh, someone or being a subject. But again, it suffers from the fact that you can pick and choose your spots. You should just pick and choose easy soft spots uh, if you are playing in single player. And if you're playing in multiplayer, this tier list uh, is really not necessarily going to apply to kind of where things are. But we are going to put general staff in B tier. Um, oop. Wait a second. Sorry. General staff goes in B tier. Uh, my little cheat sheet off to the side is throwing me off because there's no S tier. Nothing is an S tier. Uh, logistics gives you increased conscription rate. Um, it notably is, you can make an argument that it's a little bit better than army reserves, uh, but it's kind of just really the same thing. Uh, we are going to put it up here. The reason why it would be better than army reserves, even though it gives the exact same modifier, is because you're at a phase in the game where it's going, where it's likely to be more researchable relative to researching production and society techs because you get logistics a little bit later. Fieldworks gives you a little bit of defense. Um, and some other stuff we'll just take a we'll take a quick look uh, at it in a second uh shell guns uh gives you a pm that produces more cannons at the cost of producing small arms um this is not especially useful and so we're going to put it behind power of the purse i think just being able to build up a navy a little bit better is a little bit more useful you're not really going to have a huge arms industry if you somehow were deciding to specialize in arms exporting arms this sort of sort of thing which i don't think is efficient shell gun would become kind of good but it's not really there and so we're gonna put it uh you know behind uh power of the purse we're gonna put field works ahead of power of the purse and then we're gonna talk about or we're gonna take a quicker look at field works although um field works is an interesting one uh, of a particular kind because it does give you uh, army defense and morale loss immediately and so this is a tech that i very rarely but sometimes do research um, as a reactive type of thing, um, when I am trying to, cause you, as soon as you get a play declared on you, sometimes it's close and you're like, oh, I want to fight this anyways. And you just research field works in response to a play being declared on you. And so perhaps this should be in C tier, but for the most part, you just let it natural spread to you, especially cause it doesn't lead into anything. And so it's, it's really not, I don't think it is, um, kind of where you want to be. Now, percussion cap unlocks the ammo factories. Um, the ammunition factories you're going to need once you have general staff, if you want it to be produced domestically. But I've found that very often you can just import the ammunition and not worry about it too much. I don't think that, um, you know, necessarily protecting your domestic uh, ammunition supply is, is extremely important. Very often the PMs uh, or the buildings will not be tremendously profitable uh, throughout all phases of the game because you oscillate between having your army raised and having it down. And when it is down, generally the buildings are not profitable and they fire people. And when they get raised, generally the buildings have to hire people. Um, this is because the auto queue will put them in the queue when you have armies raised and they will overbuild the ammunition a little bit. And and so uh, it's nice strategically for having a protected industry on this, um, but it is not, you know, necessarily the best thing in the world. But we're going to put it at the back of C tier here. Now, triage, if I am not mistaken on the numbers, gives you 50% uh, uh, decreased mortality, or it is, uh, it's not decreased mortality per se. You get, it is decreased mortality. Let's just jump into it and double check it. It's also gives you uh decreased morale loss which is kind of the more important modifier as it relates to you know being able to do things but triage is going to give you first aid for your barracks notably first aid was buffed because it no longer requires opium in 1.2 but this gives minus 25 percent morale loss and plus 50 percent recovery rate recovery rate is the amount of casualties you suffer that do not die they can my understanding of this is they can recover either as a fully like a full person or they can recover as dependents 
I'm not, uh, to me this uh, system is relatively opaque and I'm not abundantly familiar with it. I assume this is a good modifier. Obviously if they were only recovering as dependents it probably wouldn't be a good modifier, but I believe they recover normally as well. And decreased morale, morale loss is also much stronger in 1.2. Uh, and we'll just take a look at field hospitals because field hospitals gives much the same thing it uh, doubles the morale loss uh, benefit and it also uh, will increase the recovery rate by another 25% and so both of these are fairly good mainly because the morale loss is more important in 1.2 because um, morale gets chipped a lot more the battles are a lot faster and so you will you won't have as much time to recover morale and this type of stuff sometimes you will see a front get snowballed on the back of one side of having low morale and so this PM is it's decent but again you have all the contexts uh, that we have previously discussed earlier in the video that are really holding back you know uh, any mil tech from being especially good so we're gonna put triage here behind line infantry in C tier and we are going to put modern nursing. Um, we are going to put that behind rifling. Or rifling is not here yet. Spoilers. So let's talk about rifling. What rifling does is it's basically the same as the screw frigate. It's going to produce more small arms. And it will move you from being merchant guild owned to privately owned. But in my opinion you are going to have more arms industries and the arms industry pms are a little bit better than screw frigate is usually not profitable the move to rifling is usually profitable and this will improve your economy a little bit but again it's really not a priority especially because if you're trying to improve your economy you just research production techs for the most part and so we're going to put it bet between triage and modern nursing now Modern nursing is not as big a bump as triage, and it also requires opium, which is one of the reasons it's kind of a little bit further down. Uh, but it is a tier 3 tech, and uh, this is kind of perhaps another reason why it should maybe be lower, because there's other better tier 3 attacks to research once you get in there. Tier 3 is a little bit kind of when the military tech in general starts to make a little bit of a turn and start being a little bit effective. Next, we have gantry cranes, cranes and ironclads, which I think just have to be evaluated together. And we're just going to take a look at this as well as, le, as, well as this Gene Ecole, or however it's pronounced. It is French, Secue Bleu. Je suis un chat. Okay, so here we're going to come in and gantry cranes gives plus ports max level. Again, as we discussed, this really isn't something you're researching for. And it also unlocks industrial port which is pretty nice because it dramatically increases your convoys and overall decreases the cost per convoy that you're going to be playing and also paying and also increases infrastructure. So this is all good. But the big thing to write home about is ironclads. And ironclads, if, so first of all, you have steamships and locks. And steamships allow you to, if you notice, for industrial port, uh, they require steamers. And they do not allow you to build steamers. So that's why these two are tied together. I wish there was some way for it to be split. But often when you, you don't want to switch to industrial port, right, without the steamers. So you have to research ironclad first or research them and then swap them over at the same time. But the thing to write home about is ironclad, which doubles the offense and defense. Doubles the offense and defense of your navies at a time when you are maybe going to be start looking at fighting uh, the UK or other great powers. If you are starting as a country that is not a great power yourself, you know, if you're starting as a minor, by the time tier three rolls around, which by the way, you'll already be in tier three on production and society tech and will have likely researched the best tier threes in each of these by the time you get to tier three in military. Um, often when this time rolls around, you maybe want to be fighting Great Britain and you want to be landing them and this sort of thing. Um, the metagame for landing, as far as I can tell, uh, seems to be landing three at a time. One landing will tie up their navy. Another landing will tie up a majority of their military and the third landing can kind of get through. So either three or four landings seems to be the metagame to game the system because sometimes they'll have 200 battalions defending against one landing and five defending against another uh, as a result of using a triple landing um, and then often the third if your navy can overpower them will get a further landing versus almost no one um, it depends on the overall infrastructure of the home counties at the time you land but this is this is kind of a, a little bit of a discussion perhaps for a different time but uh, if you have three, you know, three coming in here, often you can get the landing when you really don't deserve the landing in terms of what your military looks like. But let's take a, let's go back to the tech.
this is a bit of a tangent, but I think it's, well, I think it's an important tangent for understanding. It also unlocks Steam Trawlers for Fishing Wars, which are, is notably quite good PM, and Steam Power for Whaling. So this actually is decent for your economy, and then also in upgrading to Industrial Port is also decent for your economy. So these will actually help out your economy, and sometimes you research them without even needing to do a landing. And so, in particular, these ones stand out as good. Uh, sometimes you rush them, um, you know, and kind of push towards Towards them very often I think the play pattern is you get the good tier threes in society and production and then you're like okay I can research the bad tier threes in society and production or I could go for ironclad gantry claims which will help both militarily and economically um, economically off the convoys and the improved PMs and so these are going to be in particular uh, two of the better ones and so we are going to you know put them in accordingly um, they they're somewhat difficult to evaluate. I wasn't sure whether I wanted to put them in B or A. And so what we did is we kind of split the difference where in reality, you can't, gantry cranes, you can't research before ironclad. So ironclads has to go above gantry cranes. Um, you can in technically, if you just need the ironclads, you could just research ironclads first and swap over. The problem is you're going to need to imp all of your, all of your shipyards will be very unprofitable because you will need to switch to um, the production of ironclads without any demand for steamers. So steamers price will be almost nothing. Um, this means that uh, your shipwrights won't be very profitable. You might even run a shortage of ironclads because you can't make them profitable. You'll have to do, you know, prioritize military. And then you will need to import um, on your, for your ports, you will need to import all of your other convoys. But if you're already importing a majority of your, and perhaps this is a strategy, if you're importing a majority of your ships anyways, and you can import steamers and ironclads, then maybe going ironclad without going gantry cranes is reasonable, but I think you just research these two at the same time. Gene Ecole, or however it's pronounced, Je suis un chat, uh, is going to be a tech that, um, allows you to get a faster recruitment rate on your ships. Uh, I think that this is not very good. It also will give you a little bit more, um, you know, uh, attack and defense, and it gives it to you at a time when you were trying to turn a corner because this is right next to ironclads and gantry cranes. And so in my estimation, it is a little bit better um, than the other, than power of the purse. And so we're gonna put it in C tier ahead of Napoleonic warfare. Now, enlistment efforts, it does unlock the, I think this is full-scale mobilization, um, the law, which I don't think is that good, and it gives you more uh, enlistment effects, or you can get more uh, conscripts. I think it's also a tier 3 tech, if I'm not mistaken, all of these I think are tier 3, and so I think it's particularly bad. And the reason why is, once you hit the tier 3 availability on tech, because you're not researching ahead of time, generally speaking, because you don't want to incur the malice, once you hit this, there's actually plenty of good tier 3 military techs, and I, I have a, you have to be in a very specific context where you're like stuck on one state and you need both the level 100 barracks and the level 100 conscription center um, in order to get things done. And we'll take a closer look at this. Let's take a closer look at this now, um, as well as looking at the uh, Je ne école, Je suis un chat. So let's quickly look at this one first. So this unlocks, it gives you plus 10 uh, offense and defense, a uh, little benefit on the morale loss, and it also improves the training rate and morale damage. So maybe I'm ranking this a little bit low, uh, but the big one, it also increases naval base max level at a time when you get ironclads. So this is kind of, usually, often these are paired together and you hit a little bit of a power spike, which is why we put them in, you know, C tier instead of D tier. There is a strategy for going je ne uh, kind of early. Hopefully I'm not mispronouncing that. Je suis un chat. Um, and so here we have the 20% conscriptable battalions and the mass conscription law. If we take a look at the mass conscription law, we will see, okay, 5% morale loss. But the big thing is 100 max, uh, max level of barracks and 100% conscription center. So in terms of if you are somehow stuck on one or two states, which is not going to be a lot of runs, but it occasionally happens, especially if you're playing like a landlocked minor like Krakow or something, this can be reasonable. It also gives 4% conscription rate and really big training rate. And so you can use this to get a really large military. And in this context, it's going to be good. Uh, but in the greater context of most runs, when you're not somehow stuck on one to two states, uh, I think that this is not a particularly good law and this is why we put it in D tier although you can make an argument another thing is that again uh, you like because most countries will not be able to support uh, a fully maxed out barracks and conscription center you know 
uh, in terms of economy unless you're on one or two states. And if you are on like three or more states, you're going to be wanting to go, you know, modern nursing, breach loading artillery, ironclad, gantry crane. Like these are when you hit the tier three instead. And so this is why we put this in D tier. We already talked about modern nursing. Electric telegraph gives a decreased war uh, exhaustion from casualties, which I think is uh, maybe something I'm not that great at evaluating. Um, this seems like a tech, again, you have a bunch of good options in tier three uh, that you are not going to really look into researching too much. And so we are going to put this in the very top of D tier because I do think war exhaustion, I, I'm very open to changing my opinion on this, um, on how important decreasing war exhaustion is. But I think in general, you're trying to pick wars that are not particularly close. And so you can make an argument for trying to research this um but if you are trying to yeah i mean if you're trying to hit a certain timing uh window um this is a decent one to go which is why i put it at the top of d but uh okay um next up we're just going to talk about uh rifling here or sorry repeaters now repeaters is a pm that is very often not profitable at the start when you research it uh, it gives you extra small arms and the reason i think it's generally not profitable is because you're using less small arms because generally you go breach loading artillery first and so this puts a more heavy emphasis on the cannons and so uh or is this one maybe this one's like sometimes profitable i don't know i've seen it be profitable and not profitable it's not insanely improving your economy you can just build more arms manufactories i guess that this makes you build fewer arms manufactories is something positive um, because other buildings tend to be more productive but this is not going to be a very good tech and we are going to put it in d tier and finally we're going to talk about ble ble bleach loading artillery breach loading artillery um let's just take a look at the breach loading artillery or the shrapnel artillery uh in kind of the context of the arms center or the barracks and we're going to come on over and we're going to look mobile artillery is giving 15 15 and also uh 15 morale damage kill rate and provinces capture shrapnel artillery doubles that uh to 30 30 um it also gives more morale damage more kill rate it's just five percent more morale damage 20 percent more kill rate it also gives devastation instead of uh provinces captured and this is a quite big upgrade and i think it's important to look in here in the context of what's going on in tier three and the only two techs that are really improving your ground military in tier three that are especially good i mean this one's okay it's extra army defense or whatever but it's going to be breach loading and modern nursing and breach loading so what's going to happen is if you hit tier three and you want a little bit of extra juice this is going to be the tech to research for land. These are the two techs to research for water. Um, and then you kind of have a bit of a dry spell, you know, throughout this, where you're getting more port, max port levels. The monitors are okay. You know, this is, torpedo boats are okay. But it, for the most part, it's about the, the tier three is more about the naval and less about the land stuff. You know, you have, this is more mobilization or decreased mobilization good requirements. And this even comes after breach loading artillery anyways. And, it's just kind of a dry spell until you hit trench and so because of this in the context of what's going on even though this is not going to improve the level of your military by as much as you know line infantry which doubles the numbers this only doubles the numbers on the artillery right and it also gives you a pm which is generally profitable but sometimes not profitable um the, the, the military techs are sometimes weird in terms, or the military PMs are sometimes weird. Uh, but because of that, we are going to actually put this. Let's come on over to our thing. We are going to put breech loading artillery ahead of ironclads here. And then we're going to put enlistment efforts, which we discussed very close to the bottom of D tier. Because there's so many tier 3 techs that are going to be good, and if you wanted... Uh, you're going to have decreasing marginal returns on increased conscription rate as well because the modifiers are additive rather than multiplicative. What I mean by that is if you have 100% of conscription rate and you add another 20%, that's adding a full 20%. But once you already have 120% and you add another 20%, that's going to be, what, like 17% increase over what you previously had. And when you add another 20%, etc., etc., et cetera, you know, when you are at 200% and you add 20%, it's only adding 10% more um, actual conscriptable battalions. So it also has decreasing marginal returns in terms of 20% is not 20% because it's not uh, added multiplicatively, it's added additively. Um, 
electric telegram we said we were going to put at the top of d tier where this is maybe one you research for a timing but i think that i think that what you do if you're generally going to have all the good tier three uh production and economic techs when you hit the tier three military techs and so i think if that's the case what you do is you often just rush for trash trench infantry you know if you are trying to hit a timing after hitting uh tier three in military or you do something resembling rushing i wouldn't quite call it rushing and then we're going to put repeaters ahead of army reserves and so this is our tier list here we are going to have a little bit of a summary uh, and talk about it. I think the biggest point to make here is just kind of a re-emphasis of kind of our background um, understanding or conditions to why we did stuff, which is that in the very early game, production and society tech are better than military tech, and you're going to prioritize them over military tech, and as a consequence, this pushes down military tech on the parameter that you are specifically talking about how you're rating them is not how powerful they are in a vacuum, but how likely you are to research them when they are immediately available, how much you should prioritize them. I think it's important to emphasize you get every tech eventually, right? So it's not a matter of a trade-off, I can get this or I can get that, but it's a trade-off of priority and speed at which you research. And because of this, you know, you need to, I think, evaluate in such a way that you are going to be pushing these these text down but just really quickly we have the production military and society text in terms of the early game the military tech is outshined um tier one and tier two are in particular deprioritized so line infantry in a vacuum is probably the best tech here uh, the reason why it's poor is because you want to go production and society techs but it's going to be tier one and tier two are going to be deeply deprioritized you notice of the ones in a and b tier three of them are tier three techs uh, because they don't interfere with the early game researching of focusing on you know production and society where you are in the context of hitting military techs you're probably hitting the tier three military techs after you have all the best society and uh, uh production tech we also have the context of where you're avoiding wars when they're close and so because of this you don't the the military tech is only useful if it's hit, bringing you over the edge really of being able to win a war and if it's not because you're picking on small people it's just not very useful um specifically times when it is useful is if you're a subject if you're a great power if you're not scave scumming or if you're in military um right now i think plays are very opaque and so i think safe scumming is kind of meta i think it's what people do um i don't think iron man is playable right now if you're a subject all the military attacks a lot better if you're a great power and you want to rumble with other great powers again it's better but other than that um or if you're playing multiplayer it's going to be good but this is not a review based on multiplayer so we have no s tier tech um and you generally kind of research look into the military tech before tier three the only time you look into it is just to get a little bit of juice before conflict you know is going to be tough okay so quickly going through it breach loading is going to add quite a lot in a bit of a dry spell where you're not going to be able to add a lot to your uh your your land military ironclad and gantry cranes you research together because gantry cranes need st steamships ironclad gives steamships and this sort of thing and in particular it doubles the power of your navy uh and is also a nice power spike if you specifically want to do a landing if you don't want to do a landing you kind of can just ignore these two although they do they do help your economy a lot because switching on to um modern ports or this isn't modern ports it's um industrial ports is going to give you a lot of convoys and gantry cranes but you have to go ironclad first and modern ports i mean sorry, industrial ports is particularly good from the increased convoys um general staff uh is going to be the best a primary pm you encounter for a very long time researching it early in particular if you're a gp you want to rumble with gps it makes a lot of sense um it is going to require ammunition uh which you maybe want to source yourself line infantry is i believe just kind of the most powerful tech um artillery gives a similar bonus but you when you're building arms industries they always produce small arms so i think uh line infantry is better triage uh helps you with morale recovery and also uh decreased casualties or the the modifier is called something else but this is a good one um but it is again in the broader context it's a tier two tech uh when you know you kind of want to be going production and society rifling is notably going to allow you to use capitalists in your arms industries buildings and so this is kind of okay uh in terms of uh it's also usually profitable so this is kind of okay in the broader context of trying to improve your economy but you're usually not going to research it yourself you're going to let it natural spread to you modern nursing doesn't lead to anything it does improve 
um, the recovery rate and the morale recovery rate is decent, but unfortunately it comes in at a spot uh, when it's a tier 3 tech, and so in the context of tier 3 techs, you're almost certainly going to go breach loading first, and then maybe modern nursing if you're trying to improve prove your land military. Artillery is a tier 1 tech, and it gives you quite a bit, but just like line infantry, you're not going to be wanting to research military tech at the very start of the game when this is available, and so it's just not very good, uh, but it is... In terms of marginal improvement on your military, these two techs improve your military by a larger margin than any other. And so I just can't put them in D tier. Je ne je suis un chat. Um, this gives you uh, a little bit more recruitment rate, specifically after you research Ironclad's Gantry Crane. So if you're trying to hit a timing of conquering the high seas, it also will give plus offense and defense um, as well. Uh, and so this one's pretty good if you're really trying to push the Navy uh, in the Tier 3 situation, which Tier 3 is a nice timing at the beginning of tier three is a nice timing for really trying to push a naval advantage napoleonic warfare is it gives you a little bit of boost it's like 50 percent more than artillery in terms of juice it also gives you more provinces captured um but this is a tier one tech and so it's not very good you usually don't want to go it percussion cap uh is good for particularly the uh protecting strategically protecting your ammo supply if you can't import ammo um, and in order to protect it for, you know, general staff, for the, the these guys, um, then maybe you want to go percussion cap. Um, but I've found that you can get away with just importing uh, your ammunition, especially with the changes to um, the what's required for adjacencies in order to get imports. And that the way to go is just to import it and really not focus on percussion cap. But if you, for some reason, can't access trade and need to get uh, the ammunition and this sort of stuff, you will want to research percussion cap. But this is kind of it. Electronic Telegram gives you 25% decreased, um, what is it, negative war exhaustion tick from casualties. This is notably, uh, I'm not sure exactly how to evaluate this, and my opinion on my evaluation of this is not particularly strong, but I think that this is not good enough to make the cut. Although it will, in, in theory, if you're really trying to make a certain war work or a certain war happen, I think there's a non-zero number of cases where you want to research it. Logistics is going to increase conscription rate. Meh, it's not very good. Uh, we discussed earlier, like, you can... There's a few things you could do to increase conscription uh, quite a lot. And I just think that it just... Uh, I don't think I don't think actively researching this is particularly good. Uh, Fieldworks maybe should go over logistics, because I think there's a context in which you research Fieldworks, but it is either a Tier 1 or at the beginning of... I think it's the beginning of Tier 2 tech, uh, where it gives extra, a little bit of extra defense. Um, and you can research this into response to being declared war on sometimes uh, if you know the war is going to be particularly close and so maybe maybe it goes up here something like this um but overall it's not that good power of the purse uh, mainly increases offense and defensive ships a little bit uh it also gives plus max level um along with jene uh i don't know if i'm pronouncing that correct uh it gives plus max level to the naval bases and so this is kind of decent but i don't think you're really maxing out your naval bases at very often on very many countries and then other than that it gives a little bit of offense and defense and some conscription rate but it's really not a lot and so i just put it back here um shell guns uh allows you to produce more cannons um i don't think this is the way if you want to improve your economy um to research shell guns you'll probably be almost always better with uh, another text so i have to put this down here repeaters kind of same thing it will give you another pm for uh producing more uh hand arms but they're kind of a similar evaluation. Army reserves gives you more conscription rate. The reason why it's below logistics is because it's earlier in the tree where you are more likely to be wanting to focus on production and society, but it's the same thing. It's not very useful. Screw frigates is often not profitable at the time you first research it. It will become profitable later, but this later is when you just let it not spread to us. Again, we're talking about focusing on prioritization, not power in a vacuum. What screw frigates will do is it'll allow you to swap your PMs over such that they are capitalist owned instead of merchant guild owns, which 4Xs the investment pool contribution of shopkeepers relative to capitalists. And so this is something good. It is notably comparable with rifling, but rifling will very often be more profitable and screw frigate will often be less profitable. And so that's kind of why I've had it, uh, these kind of in the place that places that they are. But very often, if you want to improve your economy, you go production tech over this. Uh, Enlistment efforts is kind of a weird one to evaluate. It is a tier three tech, and that's why it's all the way back here because there's a lot of tier three techs that start to get good for improving your military. Notably, you know, breach loading and modern nursing are going to be what you are likely to go, and it gives you this mass conscri uh, it gives conscription rate. Um, 
first of all but this conscription rate is another 20 percent after you have army reserves and logistics and so this extra 20 percent is less than 20 percent because you're going from 140 percent to 160 percent not 100 percent to 120 percent and so it's notably not a 20 percent increase in the conscriptable battalions but what it does give you is mass conscription as a law and very occasionally mass conscription as a law will be good and so maybe this should even be in c tier you know instead of way back here i'm willing to accept that i might be getting this one wrong but i think that the number of times or the the frequency of the context when you're on one or two states that can support uh 400 battalions um i think that the context is just not very frequent and maybe i'm not kind of fully appreciating that you can go mass conscription for one single war do this huge conscript push and then swap back and this type of strategy but i just don't think it's I don't think it's there. And hydraulic cranes just increases the number of ports you have. Uh, this is not particularly good. It also, like, uh, yeah, it's not very good because when you are really needing a lot of ports, um, or you're suffering from lack of port capacity, it means you don't have a lot of coastal provinces. And so this will only increase your ability to build more ports by a small margin. And then when you, you and I think you should just grab more coastal provinces as a general heuristic. Like this is, this is um, how you should approach it. And you should just steal them from Kutai or like miners in Borneo or whatever. And you should just look to strategically try and acquire more coastal provinces instead of ever actively researching this hydraulic cranes. And so this has been a, um, uh, a not starting steps video. It has been a tier list for the military production tech. I was thinking not even doing this because I think that the context is a little funny. You know, we have no S tier, um, I think none of it belongs in S tier, and I like I, I don't even know where in A or B tier these four texts go. I think that these are far and away the four texts that should be emphasized as being the best, and perhaps they're all A tier, perhaps they're all B tier, something like this, um, where you will want to actively research breech loading, ironclad, gantry cranes actively, and occasionally general staff. I could even see general staff being down here, but I think it is a, a step above line infantry. But it's the the, the story of this is just. Uh, the military texts are not good relative to the production and society texts. You can also pick and choose your wars. You don't have to fight. Uh, you don't if you don't want to. You shouldn't pick really close fights. You're gonna get just wrecked on casualties. It's gonna hurt your economy in that way. And so it's. Um, I just think mil tech in general early on is not very good. If we jump into the game and just take a quick a closer look, I think in particular there's maybe. I think there's, uh, perhaps four texts worth researching ahead of time and i think they are trench works nco training mobile armor and the tech that's in society and so uh well, well mobile armor you can't really research ahead of time because you have to start researching a bunch of level five texts to get into it but so maybe it's trench works and nco infantry these are really 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 good and so uh i think it's not until kind of the later game where military shines in particular the level three military shrines because you've already gotten to your production and society tech uh before you've already like gutted the really good tier three techs from these um, before you like get to being able to do tier three in military because you're mainly letting your tier two's nat spread to you so it's you're going to be behind on this um and then once you hit tier three you do hit a little bit of a corner where you kind of want to focus on this i think um but yeah this has just been a summary um i hope that this was informative um if you like this video feel free to like comment subscribe uh you know do the youtube algorithm stuff it does help out um i'm not sure if i'm going to do the late game tier list uh next or if maybe start doing a little bit of some other tutorials something like this um but anyways have a good day